Can you see this? Yes. Okay, well, um, thanks everyone for joining. Um, so uh, if you are hoping to be in the second neuro neurosymbolic AI summer school and you're in the right place. So um, now um, let me just uh, make a few quick points and uh, we have a packed schedule today. So I'll try to make this quick and then pass it to our first speaker. So. First, um, for those of you uh, maybe not as familiar with what we're talking about, what, what do we mean by neurosymbolic? I'll just uh, refer you to the picture here in the lower left. Uh, we mean slight, something slightly bigger than uh, neuro, actually, a sort of learning, um, including, among other things, um, probabilistic graphical models. Um, and on the symbolic side, we mean several things, which um, logic, programs, grammars, um, logic includes as special case knowledge graphs and rules. Um, those things are all isomorphic um, or grammars at least have a, a hierarchy and uh, at some point become isomorphic. So, um, so we mean sort of a, a set of things, um, not any particular approach, we'll see diverse array tomorrow. Hey, uh, why neurosymbolic? Um, I'll say more about this tomorrow morning, but uh, roughly speaking, three big open problems in AI. I've, I made up an acronym uh, for the first one, um, which may or may not stick, but I'll, I call it human auditable and augmentable. And um, this is the need to um, have models really checkable by humans. By augmentable, I mean things like add human knowledge um, slash constraints or controls. Uh, learning with less, meaning, you know, don't burn down the whole earth um, if you can uh, with a CPU. Um, and uh, out of distribution generalization, meaning, and this is where reasoning can, uh, this is how I characterize it, sort of deep um, importance of reasoning, the ability to generalize far from um, training data. Okay, now, uh, why summer school? Uh, we started this a uh, year ago, and um, uh, because of the uh, sort of what we knew was an obvious need or understanding of the other side, so to speak, if you're on the neuro or learning side, typically understanding of uh, the other side, which we'll call KRR, knowledge representation reasoning, um, you know, is is uh, might be uh, too light to actually get in and do research that tries to combine, and and vice versa. Okay, so um, this, of course, is a general issue in in a field as big as AI, but this is a particularly um, particularly uh, they're they're very different in style. We'll touch upon that tomorrow um, as well in the research talks. Um, and uh, it's, it's sort of unclear, it was to me anyway, and to many people, where else one could learn the other side quickly and sort of deeply because in, at points, of course, the points where you want to make contact between the two. So, <clears throat> of course, it's very challenging um, because of the... Uh, you know, huge depth within each and breadth. So um, really, there is no one person who understands everything. Um, so I invited some of the uh, very people that help create the foundations we want to explain. Okay, um, and uh, so it's no accident. These are uh, top people you'll be hearing from. Um, and sort of, uh, of course, in eight hours, we can, we'll definitely not do justice uh, the, you know, there, there's no way to do justice to everything. So, um, I'm, I've curated some topics and, um, uh, accounting somewhat for the talks that you'll hear tomorrow to prepare for them. And also, um, in a way accounting for things that we covered last time, last year's summer school, roughly speaking, the ordering will be, uh, KRR, 
um, basics of care are. Then we're going to sort of slide toward the uh, learning side by adding uncertainty and uh, to logic. And then I will talk about things like the uh, foundations of learning itself and then the sort of uh, practical aspects of neural nets. So most people have seen neural nets um, on both sides, but not necessarily the sort of latest uh, uh, tricks and uh, ideas of neural nets. Okay, and then I've selected a few interface topics, which um, I think are important. Um, <clears> okay, <throat> hey, um, but you know, of course, uh, there's much more we can do, and we'll discuss that in the panel at the end of the day. What else we can do? Uh, what we should do next? Okay, um, and uh, note that this is now uh, non-denominational, so to speak, meaning not affiliated with one company or organization. We're um, uh, now un under the auspices of a nonprofit, which you'll see more of later. Um, we're coordinating with uh, key people in the NETI conference. And uh, next year, for example, we hope to um, have them uh, next to each other in time. And um, let me thank the executive committee. Uh, um, there's a uh, uh, in particular, Asim, who you'll will be our um, the, our assistant chair, who is the master of all the logistics. Um, uh, Francesca Rossi, uh, Benjamin Grossoff, uh, Arthur Garces, and Luis Lam. Okay, um, and uh, just a bit on the mechanics. So, for the questions, WebEx has a Q and A area, and it has chat. So please use the Q and A. That's where we'll look for the questions. Um, chat, you can chat with people, but we won't look there for the questions. Okay, and uh, videos will all be viewable on the web page. It's uh, the big link on the left afterward. Okay, um, with that, I'm going to pass it to Benjamin. Let me just say, in the interest of time, all of our speakers are highly accomplished and have long bios. Um, but uh, I'm just going to give one one liners. Um, so uh, Benjamin uh, is going to be our uh, our teacher for the next few hours. So he's one of the most knowledgeable and articulate people I know. Among other things, uh, he was a professor at MIT and uh, did a lot of a lot to help make KRR work in practice, including uh, helping set to. W3C standards. Uh, with that, let me pass it to you, Benjamin. Thanks, Alex. Um, I'm now 